Hello, my name's Andy from the Engineers Academy and today we're going to be carrying out hardness tests on a number of different engineering materials. First of all, we're going to be testing aluminium. Then we're going to be testing low carbon steel. Next, we'll be testing high carbon steel. And finally, we'll be testing glass. Now, the first thing to point out about a hardness test is that it's a non-destructive test, meaning each of these engineering materials or each of these components could still be used in their given application. So onto the device that we're going to be using, we're going to be using a leave hardness tester. And the leave hardness tester will give us a reading for leave hardness. More commonly, we would use things such as Vickers hardness or Brinnell hardness. And later on in the video, I'll show you how we can convert our L value or our leave hardness into a Brinnell hardness value. So if we look at this hardness tester a little bit more closely, then what we have is we have a probe. And inside that probe, there's an insert or a pickup. And it's similar to a ball bearing. And essentially, if you can imagine, when we drop a ball bearing onto a surface, if that surface is hard, that ball bearing is going to bounce and reverberate. If that surface is soft, then the surface is going to absorb some of the energy from the ball bearing, and it's going to rebound or reverberate less. And that's basically what this machine's doing. It's measuring the amount of rebound in that pickup or that ball bearing. So when we conduct the test, we draw back the collar, and that raises the pickup to the top of the probe here. We then position the probe on the surface that we're trying to measure and we press the button at the top to release the probe. And you'll hear that the ball bearing strikes the surface and if you listen carefully you can actually hear it rebound. One thing to be careful of when carrying out this test is to ensure that the piece of material is against a solid surface. What we're testing here is the hardness of the surface. And if this isn't against a stable base here, then what we might end up doing is having vibration in the piece of material itself. And that would skew our results and give us inaccurate readings. So for each of the materials, we're going to ensure that they're placed against a solid surface. We're going to take three readings of each material so that we can then take an average. And that will give us a more accurate result for the hardness of each of these materials. And finally, we'll take that average L value. Remember that this is measuring L value or leave hardness and we'll use that to convert to a Brinnell hardness value. So first of all, let's begin with our aluminium. And we already have our first reading for the aluminium of 595. So we're going to take a second reading, placing the probe against the surface and releasing the ball bearing. We have 616. And finally, our third reading, again, we have 618. Let's move on to our second material then. And this time we're measuring low carbon steel. Again, we retract the collar, place it flat against the surface, and release the ball bearing. 646. Our second reading. 649. And our final reading. 663. Next, we have high carbon steel. And for high carbon steel, we have 719, 718, and 715 again. Good consistent results there. And finally, onto the glass. We have 910, and again you can hear the rebound from the ball bearing. 916 and finally 911. So in the next part of the video we're going to take these results and convert each of those hardness values into a Brinnell hardness. So now that we've collected our test data and we've obtained three L values for each of our four materials we're now in a position to calculate the average L value for each material and then determine the Brinnell hardness using a conversion graph. Now, as you can see, I've already completed this for the aluminium and I'll show you how I generated those results. And then you'll have an opportunity to complete this for the other three materials in the practice questions. So the first step then is to take our three readings and determine the mean average. And that's done by adding the three values together. So in this case, I've added 595, 616 and 618 for the aluminium and then dividing the total by three, or the number of pieces of data, giving me a mean average of 610. 
Now that I have the average L value for aluminium, I can now go to my conversion graph in order to determine the corresponding brittle hardness. And the conversion graph I'm going to show you was provided with the hardness tester. Now on this graph, along the x-axis, we have the measured L value. And for this, we're going to be using our average values. And on the y-axis, we have Brinnell slash Vickers hardness value. And what you'll notice from the legend on the right-hand side is that the blue line represents Brinnell hardness and the red line represents Vickers hardness. We also have an extrapolated power curve on top of the Brinnell hardness. And the reason why that's been added is because the data range that we had for this blue line for the Brinnell hardness was limited and it only ran from L values of 300 up to around 700. Now because some of our average L values are going to be greater than 700, we've needed to extrapolate that curve in order to allow us to determine the Brinnell hardnesses from those L values. Now the way that this conversion graph is used is by finding the index mark for our average L value. And if you recall, for aluminium it was 610. And then we project up onto the line. And when we strike the line, we project left to get the corresponding Brinnell value. So let's do that now for aluminium. So we had an average L value of 610. And if we refer to our x-axis here, at the center of the number 600, we have an index mark for an L value of 600. And at the center of 650, we have an index mark for 650. So what we're going to do is take our ruler and we're going to project upwards from the L value of 610 and we're going to project upwards until we meet that Brinnell line. Once we meet the Brinnell line then we're going to project left and we're going to project left to get our corresponding index mark on our y-axis. So on our y-axis then, we can see we have a Brinnell hardness of 300, level with the number 300, and a Brinnell hardness of 350, level with the 350, and there's five squares in between those two values, meaning each square represents a Brinnell hardness of 10. So we go from 300 to 310, 320, 330. Therefore, the average L value of 610 corresponds with a Brinnell hardness of 330. If we return to our table then, we can see here that our average L value of 610 for aluminium corresponded with a Brinnell hardness of 330. So what you should be able to do now is repeat this process for material 2, the mild steel, material 3, the high carbon steel, and material 4, the glass. You'll then be able to populate the remaining squares in this table to provide a direct comparison of the Brinnell hardness of these four materials.